Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Finn, or yet another gaming fail, and I'm here to teach you another useful nugget of information about the DCS Mission Editor. So, um, obviously in our previous videos we've done um, a few different things, waypoints, bombing, tasks, we've set up SAM sites, we've done error refueling, loads of interesting stuff. I'd recommend checking it out if you haven't already. If you have, then good for you. Well done. Congratulations. So, um... In this video, we're going to be doing wave attack defense techniques. So obviously, if you're setting up a training mission, you don't want it to go on a timer for every wave because, well, what if you're teaching someone how to start up an aircraft and ready their weapons or something like that? You know, you don't want to rush them into it. You also don't want to have it on a timer because if you're going wave to wave to wave, at some point you will run out of munitions unless you're cheating, uh, which let's assume that we that you don't do that. I don't. I don't like to cheat in video games, so um, yeah. So you want to be able to control the pace at which the game is going. So what we need is some way of triggering these events. So we'll start off. Let's pick a vehicle that we can spawn in the cockpit of, just to make it easier. Um, I'm gonna set up a US AV-8B, and I'm gonna set the uh, skill to client, so that it's a player-controlled aircraft. Take off, uh, sorry, take off from ramp. Here we are. So we'll spawn in the cockpit, and then let's add some vehicles for us to look at. And we're not gonna do the whole thing of setting up a mission and fully testing it because this is showing you the techniques we use to make it work. I'm sure you can do the rest by yourself. So we're just gonna place down a whole bunch of these M113s. Uh, we're gonna just place down five of them. Um, so. Let's do wave one, and we're just going to do this five times. One, two, three, four, and five. We've got five vehicles, so they're going to spawn in wave by wave. Now, we want them to spawn in when we command them to. At the moment, if we do it like this, they will spawn in as default, so you hit um, late activation which is a button just down here on the uh, the options for the vehicles individually. I'm just going to go late activation, back and forth, late, late activation, pick the next one. So now, if we were to save and hit fly, hit start, it loads up, does the whole quick speedy load, as I would hope it would. Um, we are in the vehicle, looking out the front, hit fly, and as you can see, there are no vehicles in front of us. Go in the F2 view, zoom out, there are no vehicles in front of us on this grass where we have placed them. Great. So, they're not spawning in until we say so. So how do we get them to spawn in? Well, first of all, um, we need to add a new condition, which is going to add a radio option. So this will give us the trigger for the first wave. Now the condition, um, all I'm going to do is set it to uh, time more. So if the time is more than one, so if the time elapsed during the game has been more than one second, let's give us a radio option. So we're going to set our action here on the right hand side to be uh, radio item add for coalition. We're going to set it to blue. We're going to call it wave one. And we're going to leave that default. So flag one will have a value of one when this is triggered, right? So all we're doing here, like I say, just to quickly revert and make sure that we're covering this properly, is the radio option, which we're going to have on spawn after one second, is going to give us a, a cue to say spawn wave one. And when you interact with that radio marker, it will set the flag of one to a value of one. Great. Fantastic. But at the moment, that doesn't do anything. We need to actually have it do something. So let's hit new. And let's call this tri trigger wave one uh, activate. Why not? So now, let's say you've interacted with the ra with the radio menu. You've told the um, you've told the aircraft or you've told the the world that you are, you are ready to fight against enemy units. Well, you're going to need to acknowledge that that flag has happened. So let's go to flag is true. So if flag one is true or has a value higher than zero uh, or is a boolean true or false um, then we can con we can continue to do the next action now the next action that we're going to do is to activate the group that 
you know, we're going to be fighting against. So the first one is going to be called wave one. Great. Well, that's cool. So we've got it to do one wave, you know. Let's say you fight off that wave, you're done. When you go back to the radio menu, the radio option for, you know, group activate, you know, is is still going to be there. It's still going to be there for wave one. But we don't want to do wave one anymore. We've already done that. We've beaten it. There's no more units to spawn. They've already been destroyed. We want to move on. Well, first of all, we want to clear off that first wave one option, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to hit new. We're going to scroll down to radio item. We're going to do remove for coalition blue. And we're going to do wave one like that. So now if you look in here, wave one was one of our options added to us with a value of one on a flag of one and now it's been removed so that gets rid of it that gets rid of the option of selecting it again but now we want to go into wave two right so the next thing we're going to do is hit new we're going to scroll down back to radio uh, radio item add for coalition again blue and we're going to call it would you guess it wave two not 22 not three wave two and this time we're going to do a flag of two because flag one's already been activated so it's not going to do anything again if we keep doing it. Instead, let's do wave two. You could have it uh, theoretically set way like flag one to false and then trigger it again and all of this McGubbins, but it becomes really complicated when you do that. It's easier for us to set the uh, the flag to two in this case. So great, we've we've now given us the option to activate wave two. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but all we have to do now is click on the one that we've just created for wave one and we can clone it and now we can call it wave two activate because it's the same thing. You know, we the flag that we're looking for to be true is no longer wave one, it's gonna be wave two. The group that we're gonna activate is no longer wave one, it's gonna be wave two. So let's just make sure I've got that set correctly there. Yep. Um, you know, we're no longer getting rid of the radio option for wave one. You know, we've select we've done wave two now, so we're gonna select wave two and get rid of that radio option. And then we're gonna give our players the option of triggering wave three. And the same here, we're gonna set the flag to three. And let's just keep continue to do it to do that now. So wave three will be activated. It has a flag true of three. Uh it's gonna be wave two. It's gonna we're gonna get rid of wave three here, sorry, not wave two, wave three. And then we're going to give you the option of activating wave four. You know, you can kind of get the gist if you understand it. You know, that's fine. Cool. Like, um, you know, you should be uh, catching on to it by now. The amount of times we've repeated it. So that's all good. That's all good. Here we go. Wave four. We've done that. So we can get rid of the radio option there. Then we're going to give you the option for wave five. Now, this is the bit where something goes slightly differently. Wave five activate. Well, we don't need to activate another group after wave five there are only five waves you know so rather than adding another option to trigger wave five in let's just uh, sorry wave six in let's get rid of that so now it caps it off so you completed five waves and you're done and that's it that's how you do it so that's how you can get wave spawning obviously you have to manually add it in and make sure that you understand which groups that you've got assigned and um make sure you're assigning them out properly which when you've got a lot of groups that can become quite complex and complicated but it's certainly something that's possible so let's hit save and let's hit fly and let's demonstrate what we've just learned so we spawn in we select our aircraft we hit ok and we're in the cockpit great now i'm going to just come to the outside view for this just so that it's a bit easier to see we got us set up with a nice shot here. Now, um, let's have a look. So I go on the radio menu, which pops up in the top right, and you can barely see it. We do F10, which gives us the radio options, and the option at F1 is wave one. Bam, and M13 has just spawned in. And now let's go and have a look. We press the radio menu again. We go to F10, other. Wave one is gone. Wave two is in its place. Bam, second M113. And then we repeat wave three, third one, and we repeat wave four, fourth one, and we repeat wave five, 
and all five vehicles have now been spawned in. So imagine that in terms of enemy aircraft. You're spawning them in waves. So whatever you want to spawn in that wave, you just assign to the trigger that is told to activate it. So wave one activates wave one, wave two activates wave two, etc., etc., etc. You just add them in on the group activate queue. So you know that's pretty useful. Now as for the last one, um, now that we go on the radio menu again, you'll notice that F10 has disappeared because we've not provided you any more radio options to trigger them. So you know, I mean, if we look over at these vehicles now. We have five vehicles, we can't add any more, these are the waves that are spawned in, and um, you've controlled the rate at which they spawn in. So this means if you have a training mission, again, fantastic, you can uh, do them at whatever rate you prefer, and you can have the mission set up exactly as you require. Now this can be used for other things, of course, um, you could use it to spawn friendlies, you could use it to change criteria, you can use it for a whole lot of stuff. Mainly, I personally use it for these wave attack defense missions where you want to control it. Obviously, there are some missions where you don't want to control it because that would make it uh, overcomplicated. But in this case, we have controlled the rate at which the aircraft or enemy are spawning in. And so we can uh, measure our attack slash defense strategy against that. Um, so I hope that's been, in like, you know informative for you guys i hope that you've learned a decent amount of that that you can apply that to a mission in the future if you do leave a comment you know just stick a stick a like on it just say great thanks this does exactly what i need so that other people can see that this is also helpful because obviously it's a tutorial there are millions of tutorials out there and i've been trying to keep it concise and informative and to let you know exactly what it is that we're doing and i don't want to be one of those bumbly like yeah, first we do this, second we do this. Uh, you know, I want to tell you why we're doing it, so that that way you can learn and apply those techniques to your own missions, and that we can see a whole load more interesting missions out there in the DCS world. Because it is a DCS world, I'll have you know. So, thank you very much for your time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.